Ok, m merci beaucoup. Euh, euh, juste deux mots. Euh, bon, bonjour tout le monde, merci d'être là. Donc, on, on prolonge notre, euh, notre euh, cycle de séminaire qui a dé démarré euh, euh, il y a un peu plus d'un mois avec la, la, la journée en présentiel, avec une série de, de présentations d'une heure sous, sous Zoom, donc un format très, très souple. Euh, on a le plaisir de commencer avec une présentation de Carlo, que je remercie beaucoup de bien vouloir inaugurer la, la, la série. Il y aura deux autres présentations sous Zoom, dans un mois, puis dans deux mois. Et ensuite, euh, on aura à nouveau un, 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 un séminaire en présentiel, il sera sur les mathématiques et on a à peu près fini de constituer le programme. Je pense que ce sera assez intéressant. Euh, on, on, vous, on vous enverra de l'information bientôt euh, là-dessus. Voilà, je ne vais, vais pas tout de suite euh, tout vous raconter. Et puis, je voudrais laisser la, la, la place à Carlo, euh, que je remercie encore une fois. Vas-y, Carlo. Merci, Marc. Je vais présenter en anglais, car ça sera plus rapide et plus clair, mais... N'hésitez pas à interagir aussi en français après dans la discussion pour attentivement passer au français. Donc, euh, je vais vous présenter les résultats de, de l'essai randomisé um, of a shared book reading experiment, uh, and which assesses the impact of a shared book reading uh, intervention on uh, children's uh, skills and on the related um, Uh, social inequalities by shared book reading. I'm referring here to uh, an intervention that aims at fostering uh, the, the frequency of uh, uh, parent-child interactions around books. So parents reading storybooks uh, to their children and talking about storybooks with their, with their uh, uh, children. So a few words of background. It's well documented that the family background affects uh, both the cognitive and the social emotional skills of uh, children since the early childhood, and that these um, early inequalities uh, uh, contribute uh, substantially to later inequalities in uh, uh, um, achievement and educational attainment. It's also well documented that uh, these inequalities, at least in part, reflect different uh, parenting practices. So different quality and quantity of uh, uh, stimulations in the, in the family environment. The economic and the sociological uh, literature on, on parenting has mainly focused on uh, uh, economic barriers and uh, uh, cultural barriers to explain these socioeconomic gaps in uh, uh, parenting and uh, 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 related uh, stimulations in early childhood. And what we are interested in, in this paper is to focus rather on uh, informational barriers. That is to say, the different uh, information and awareness that parents from different uh, socioeconomic groups may have about the relevance of some practices for children's development and, uh, uh, and school success. And um, we think, we argue that these information mechanisms, these information barriers, Um, are quite interesting from a, a policy perspective because arguably, and that's one of the things that we try to show in this uh, uh, experiment, um, arguably information barriers are easier uh, and cheaper to remove than uh, a cultural or uh, uh, economic uh, uh, barriers. And uh, a second uh, uh, argument that we make in terms of the policy motivation of the studies that is specifically related to the, to the French context, where we have a number of uh, interventions aimed at reducing early inequalities, but that tend to focus primarily on the school environment. For instance, uh, the, the recent reforms uh, halving the size of uh, 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 classes in the first grades of primary schools in disadvantaged areas, the coup de pouce, uh, the anticipated entry in uh, pre-primary schools in disadvantaged neighborhoods, and a number of other ambitious and costly interventions that tend to focus on the school environment, which is, of course, uh, uh, very relevant, but they tend to leave the family environment uh, uh, unchanged. And since we know from time budget surveys that uh, children spend no less than uh, 40% of their time under the supervision of uh, their parents when we take into account uh, uh, the time before and after school, uh, the weekends, the um, 
the holidays, of course, this limitation seems uh, uh, quite problematic. And among information interventions, focusing on the family environment, focusing on, on parenting, uh, shared book reading interventions, we argue, are a, a, a promising target because shared book reading uh, could be regarded as a, a relatively accessible uh, parental investments also for parents with limited uh, uh, economic uh, uh, and cultural resources uh, and with a limited uh, uh, investment focus. So uh, books for children can be uh, bought for um, a few euros or can be found for free in the uh, dense network of public uh, uh, libraries that we have in uh, at least in large metropolitan areas in uh, in uh, in France, uh, they use a simple language, so a language that is accessible also for parents with low levels of education uh, and uh, a limited familiarity with French. And uh, uh, reading a story to to your child doesn't demand uh, a lot of time, but if done on a regular basis, we know that it can enrich the vocabulary of of uh, the child. The challenge is, of course, how to effectively inform and motivate parents and particularly most disadvantaged parents to undertake this uh, uh, activity. So we are, of course, we are of course not the first ones who argue about the potential of uh, shared book reading interventions for children's development and uh, uh, educational inequalities. Actually in uh, several uh, French uh, primary and pre-primary schools, uh, book loan projects already uh, exist. Uh, the limitation is that most of the time, uh, uh, teachers initiate these book loan projects without informing uh, parents about the relevance of this activity and about how to effectively read to their uh, uh, children. They simply assume that parents already know that uh, uh, reading storybooks to their children is important for their development uh, and that they know how to read, which is of course a quite dubious assumption and certainly a kind of knowledge that we can assume being very uh, socially stratified. Then we have uh, um, several home visiting programs to promote shared book reading. The most famous one being maybe the book start. We have some pediatric programs such as Reach Out and Read, library-based interventions such as Born to Read, and we have dialogic reading uh, interventions. I, I, I won't comment much on uh, uh, these uh, methodologies, just a few comments on the dialogic reading interventions uh, for, for reasons that will be apparent in a while. Here, the idea is not only to uh, promote a higher frequency of uh, storybook reading, uh, but also more interactions around the books uh, between parents and children. And in this methodology, there is a quite uh, structured uh, uh, protocol to train parents to stimulate children to talk around the story and to uh, 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 even retell the story that they have uh, uh, heard. Now, uh, we realized at the beginning of the project that um, um, there is a high consensus about the fact that uh, um, shared book reading interventions are effective, are good way to promote children's uh, skills. But this consensus has been uh, largely based uh, on correlational studies, most typically pre-post uh, designs or uh, ecological designs. And over the past two decades, uh, we see a, num a growing number of uh, randomized experiments testing in a more stringent way the efficacy of these uh, interventions. And we had the impression that these uh, randomized controlled trials were kind of challenging the consensus about the efficacy of these shared book reading uh, uh, interventions. And we thought we could make a meta-analysis to understand if this is the case. So we selected the uh, uh, evaluation studies of shared book reading interventions targeting parents of uh, children aged zero to six years old. Uh, randomized experiments, as I said, and only those with uh, standardized tests of children's skills. Uh, it's almost always uh, language skills tests and almost always actually uh, vocabulary uh, tests. So here the, the criterion of selection is essentially 
having standardized measures of uh, children's skills as opposed to uh, parents' self-reports, for instance, of their children's uh, vocabulary. Um, so we managed to find 30 experiments covered by 19 uh, 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 studies. As you can see, uh, they are mostly done in over the past two decades, mostly focusing on the US or other Anglo-Saxon countries. We know very little about, um, for instance, the European context. Uh, they are equally spread in terms of age of the children below or above uh, three years old, uh, and also quite equally spread in terms of whether they target only disadvantaged areas or uh, low SES families, disadvantaged uh, socially, economically disadvantaged families, or whether they take a broader uh, uh, targeting. Um, two important limitations that we document in these meta-analyses. First of all, uh, uh, most of these studies are based on uh, small non-random uh, uh, samples. As you can see, the median sample size is 120 cases. And uh, uh, none of these uh, uh, studies and of these 30 experiments relies on uh, 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 random sampling. So most typically, um, parents are approached, for instance, via uh, an announces in, uh, in the newspapers, uh, or uh, there is a recruitment of some doctors, of some teachers uh, in a quite ad hoc basis. Uh, and we could never find uh, a study selecting uh, uh, randomly from a detailed, uh, reliable general list, uh, uh, schools, uh, hospitals, or uh, uh, libraries. And, and we find this quite concerning that because even if we are talking about randomized controlled trials, we can have very strong uh, causal inferences, but if we have strong issues with uh, uh, generalizability and the external validity of their findings, it's not clear whether uh, uh, we are progressing a lot in terms of what we learn about these uh, uh, um, interventions. And of course, the other uh, uh, challenge is uh, uh, that uh, these interventions, these studies focus on short term uh, outcomes. As you can see, um, virtually all uh, observe what happens only within the first uh, uh, six months, uh, mainly uh, the, the post test is carried out immediately after the intervention, in some cases within six months after the intervention, and only in one case, uh, uh, more than six months after the intervention. Um, I can skip this uh, uh, slide. It's just to say that basically the interventions that we are talking about are essentially about providing books to parents, books to read, storybooks, and uh, flyers uh, or other type of information materials about the relevance of, uh, of storybooks. And this is the forest plot that summarizes, in a sense, some of the main findings of, uh, of our meta analysis. So these are uh, Cohen's average uh, effect sizes across all the 30 uh, experiments. And you see across the 30 experiments, the, the effect size is uh, 0 0.16. So the, the, essentially, that means that uh, uh, across these experiments, the uh, average impact is 16% of a standard deviation on a measure of uh, uh, children's vocabulary. Uh, but here we differentiate between uh, um, uh, dialogic reading interventions in the upper part, in the upper panel, and all the other interventions. And as you can see, even from the title, uh, the, the coins D is 26% for dialogic reading interventions and only 6% for all the other interventions. So one uh, uh, empirical indication of the meta-analysis is that actually the consensus, the general consensus about the efficacy of shared book readings should be challenged. The logic reading interventions seems to be a rather promising methodology, but the other interventions have rather dubious uh, efficacy. Mm. Um, two more results of the meta-analysis that challenge the efficacy of uh, shared book reading interventions. Um, first of all, uh, uh, we we compare those studies measuring immediately uh, 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 the outcomes on children's vocabulary with those measuring uh, 
uh, uh, the outcomes uh, after one month, so essentially between one and, and six months, as we know. And as you can see, um, when we compare the two groups, uh, it's clear that uh, uh, we have much more evidence of an effect uh, among when the, the outcomes are measured immediately after the intervention, while uh, much less so when uh, even after a few months after the intervention. So in other terms, there are indications of fade out effects meaning that the effects seem to be short term and then to decline or, or even disappear, which could be, be either because children of the experimental group forget the words that they may have learned through the books uh, or because uh, the children of the control group may catch up and meaning that the words that in the children of the treatment group have learned would have been learned anyway by the children of the control group. And the other uh, concerning result uh, is that uh, this intervention seems to be more effective uh, on high SES uh, rather than on low SES children, because when low SES children are targeted, the, the effect sizes are about half than when they are not targeted. So um, these short-term uh, benefits uh, seem to uh, arrive at the prices of increasing socioeconomic gaps in the sense that upper class children seem to benefit more from, um, from these interventions. So quick summary, the logic reading works uh, for the other uh, uh, book reading interventions, the evidence is pretty uh, weak. There are important issues with the external validity of these studies and the focus on short-term outcomes. And there are uh, concerns about their uh, external validity and scalability, but I, I, I won't focus on, much on that. So uh, this is in a sense the, the background of our uh, experiment that they carried out with uh, Denis Fougere. We teamed up also with two uh, psychologists, uh, Nathalie Mike Breton and Karine Maltel. Uh, Clement Penn and Geraldine Comoreto were the research assistants of the project. We had a partnership with the uh, Académie de Paris and uh, mm, uh, with Gallimard Jeunesse and Nathan that kindly provided the books for the project. And uh, the protocol and the uh, analysis plan were pre-registered at the social science registry. So in terms of targeting, we target the 12th, 18th, 19th, and 20th arrondissement of uh, uh, the city of Paris. Within this arrondissement, only public schools in disadvantaged uh, areas, uh, REP and REP plus uh, 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 schools that were not already implemented in uh, book loan projects. And within these schools, we focus on children aged uh, uh, four, so moyenne section. Uh, we have uh, uh, collected data and carried out the experiment uh, on two for two years, so on two cohorts of, uh, of students. We have first analyzed the data separately and because uh, uh, we couldn't find any uh, difference, significant difference in the impacts for the two cohorts, uh, then uh, I will present the joint, uh, uh, the results based on the pooled uh, uh, analysis. Um, so we have a, a random sample of uh, 46 schools, uh, about uh, 1,800 uh, uh, children with valid information. Uh, from the initial sample, 11 schools refused to participate, so we had to replace them with uh, uh, schools from the same arrondissement. Uh, among the 46 schools that finally participated in the study, uh, we uh, uh, randomized, we used the within school randomization. So within each school, half of the classes are uh, were assigned uh, to the um, uh, to the treatment and up to the control status. So all the children of the treated classes were treated and all children of uh, the uh, uh, control classes were not involved in, uh, and none of them was involved in the, in the, in the treatment. So this is a class-based uh, cluster randomization with school level uh, uh, blocking. Uh, no school and no class left the study once we communicated the results of the randomization. Uh, in order to participate in the study, uh, parents had to sign uh, a parental consent form that was uh, distributed by the teachers. As you can see, uh, the parental consent rate was extremely high and we had very little uh, uh, longitudinal uh, uh, attrition. And the main reason why um, we had such a high level of participation in our view relates to the fact that we agreed a delayed treatment with uh, 
with the schools. So uh, uh, with this mechanism, according to which uh, uh, children of the control classes uh, would be uh, would receive the treatment in the following uh, uh, school year. This was quite essential because uh, teachers liked uh, the, the project a lot and wanted to make sure that uh, ultimately every student, uh, every child would uh, have access to, to the intervention. This was good in terms of parental participation, uh, um, also in terms of reducing the risk of uh, treatment contamination and treatment replacement. Uh, the big price that we pay for, for, for these choices, of course, that we are also limited to short-term outcomes because, as I said, in the next year, we had to uh, deliver the treatment to the control group. So we had a, a qualitative um, preparation uh, uh, study, essentially, uh, we spent several months uh, interviewing parents on the reasons why we're reading or not reading, how they were reading. Um, and we interviewed also teachers on, the, on their book loan uh, projects and the related experiences that they had about how parents reacted to this. We used this qualitative study to, to design uh, the intervention and then we piloted uh, to, to refine it. Um, we uh, we have a baseline test uh, in, in both years, as I said. So it's essentially a, a vocabulary test, a standardized test administered to every uh, a child uh, separately, and a parental uh, 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 questionnaires. Then we have uh, the treatment, the intervention, um, lasting four months. We have a post-treatment test uh, one month after. And we have a follow-up before delivering the treatment to the control group uh, six months after uh, 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 the end of the, uh, of the intervention. So the intervention, the intervention, first of all, we have a book loan uh, uh, intervention. So um, two books per week to uh, every uh, family of uh, treated uh, classes among a selection of 20 books one brochure per week during the first two months of uh, 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 the intervention that lasted, as I said, four months. So essentially, uh, every week on Monday, the teachers were uh, putting the books on the table and letting the children uh, choose two uh, books, uh, making sure that every child was not choosing all the time the same book. And then uh, the children put in their pro colored uh, project back the, the, the two books of the week, uh, a flyer with information on uh, shared book reading for the, for the parents. And, uh, and then they came back home uh, uh, with the idea that they would give the flyers, the books to the parents and that this could motivate parents to, uh, uh, to read. Um, we had an initial phone call to every uh, uh, family to present the project and to motivate uh, uh, parents to um, to read the, the flyers, the information that we were delivering. And uh, we also had, uh, uh, during the last uh, two months, uh, uh, one text message per week uh, that was reiterating the main messages of the flyers, and it was also trying to keep the parents mobilized into the, the project. So um, treatment, the, the contents of these flyers, mainly two clusters of contents. The first one aimed at motivating parents to read. So the focus was on the benefits of this activity, why developing children's vocabulary is important for their uh, social emotional language and cognitive development and for the school success, uh, how shared book reading contributes uh, to uh, uh, enriching the vocabulary and many other uh, characteristics of children and why having a regular reading ritual is, uh, is uh, useful and important. So for instance, through the qualitative study, we had collected the number of reasons for why parents were not reading and we were trying to provide a number of tips and suggestions uh, to deal with the kind of daily constraints that they were facing. And the second set of clusters were, of messages was instead on how to effectively read. So for instance, how to propose and not to impose the activity to the children, how to play the story rather than mechanically read the story, the importance of using the images of the books, how to encourage interactions and conversations around the stories, uh, etc. 
So this is an example of uh, the uh, um, the um, uh, slides that we uh, that we the, of the flyers that we had. This is another one. As you can, this is my office before delivering the books. Uh, so um, uh, just a comment uh, on, on the format of these materials. There was a strong focus on accessibility for uh, uh, disadvantaged families, uh, for families with low cultural and language resources, with limited familiarity with French, uh, with a low investment focus. So the flyers had very pretty short and simple texts. We tried to repeat a few basic messages across different formats, the phone call, the flyers, the text messages. Uh, the phone calls could be done in uh, in five languages uh, for allophone uh, uh, parents. I can talk maybe in the discussion about uh, um, immigrant parents more in general. And the books were uh, quite simple in their language and uh, had several images um, that could help parents also to understand the, and children to understand the contents and the words that they were uh, not familiar with. Um, I will skip these measurements. So um, um, the primary outcome that we had uh, pre-registered was a, a test of receptive uh, uh, vocabulary administered by interviewers that were blind to the experimental uh, status uh, of, uh, of children. And uh, of course, we, had, we administered the same uh, uh, test before and after the, uh, the intervention. And uh, we focus on the Peabody picture vocabulary test, uh, uh, which has a French translation that is called EVIP, uh, because this is a test that is extensively used in this, uh, in this literature. It's extensively um, validated. It has two parallel forms, so it fits well with the longitudinal design of experiments. You can administer form A in the baseline and form B in, uh, at the end line. And uh, it has been translated in uh, in uh, in French and adapted uh, to, to to French. Um, a major limitation that is discussed in the literature about this test uh, and that we found pretty relevant given our uh, target is that um, for children uh, uh, for young children uh, the test. Uh, involves a relatively small number of words, for instance, for children aged uh, four. Um, uh, the number of words that are tested uh, is between 20 and 30 or 40 for most uh, 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 children, okay? So if these words are not in the books that children are, that parents read to their children, of course, the, the, the AVP is unable to detect uh, any uh, uh, treatment impacts. And given that the vocabulary of children at these ages involves several thousand words, uh, uh, it's very likely that none of these 30 or 40 words or just a few of them will be in the, in the books uh, and uh, uh, the test will have problems of uh, sensitivity. So in the literature, there is uh, um, a discussion uh, around this test. On one side, this is a very standardized and uh, a, a good quality measure of general uh, vocabulary. On the other side, when it comes to measuring experimental effects, uh, particularly with a short run focus, rather than measuring effects of long interventions and with a long run focus, it may not be sensitive enough. And uh, uh, a solution to this in the literature is to uh, have uh, uh, the same methodology as the P body picture vocabulary test, but adapted to the uh, specific words uh, are available in the in the books. And what we did was to use both methods. We have both the standard uh, P body picture vocabulary test and a version of the test that is adapted uh, to the words of the book. And then as uh, instrumental outcomes, uh, we have uh, self-reported uh, shared book reading uh, uh, frequency, parents' enjoyment of shared book reading and children's enjoyment of shared book reading. So as I said, we had parental questionnaires, both before and after the intervention, and uh, parents reported about uh, the, the frequency of this activity and their and their children's enjoyment for this activity. But these are, of course, uh, uh, self-reported outcomes. So um, social desirability is, is, of course, quite uh, a relevant uh, point. 
we did a bit of validation of this uh, uh, version of uh, uh, the Peabody picture vocabulary test, uh, what we call the EVIPSE, maybe in a bit appropriate way. Uh, so, for instance, we could show with the factor with the principal component analysis that uh, it measures exactly the same underlying construct and as the, the as the uh, standard forms. It's just that it's adapted to the vocabulary of the books. It has a, 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 and when we compute the Cronbach's alpha on these measures, we find uh, uh, pretty acceptable uh, uh, values. Um, a quick comment uh, on the uh, equivalence uh, analysis. So as I said, through the parental questionnaires, we have a number of uh, 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 data on the social demographic uh, characteristics of children and their families uh, and the frequency of shared book reading. And we have a test uh, of uh, 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 children's uh, vocabulary. I didn't say it, but this is a, a test of uh, receptive vocabulary, of passive vocabulary of the children. And uh, uh, the, the short summary that they make of this table is that we never reject the hypothesis that uh, the two groups, the treated and the control group, uh, uh, come from uh, from the same population, meaning that uh, it seems like the, the randomization worked uh, reasonably well uh, and the two groups uh, before the intervention were uh, fairly uh, uh, similar, so that any difference that we observe after the intervention uh, could be reasonably attributed to the effects of the intervention. Also, uh, I would like to mention that uh, uh, Quite unsurprisingly, given the target of our study, we have a large share of families with an immigrant background. We use as a measure the, the, the languages that are spoken at home. So um, we asked if parents were talking in French with their children, in French plus in, primarily in French, but also with another language, in another language, but also in French or all, only in another language. And, and as you can see, we have uh, a large group of uh, bilingual families. And also um, um, highly educated parents, so parents with a tertiary degree account for about half of the, of the sample. Uh, shared book reading on a daily basis is an already fairly uh, widespread uh, activity given that about 40% of parents declare that they do it. Again, these are self-reports. Um, how we model the treatment uh, impacts. So for every outcome uh, that we analyze, we have the measure, the outcome at the post-test or at the follow-up that is regressed on the, uh, on the same uh, variable at the baseline. Then we have a dummy for uh, treatment status, so whether the child uh, was treated or controlled. We have a dummy for year because, as I said, we have two cohorts, so we have two years of data collection. And if the outcome is a quantitative metric variable, uh, such as uh, uh, the score on the uh, vocabulary test, we have an ordinary least square regression. If it's a, a, a dichotomous outcome, such as uh, the parental self-reports on uh, uh, reading or not on a daily basis to their children, we use either binomial logit or linear probability models. Uh, I, I'm presenting here an intention to treat uh, estimates. We have also estimates on the treated, so um, estimates that try to adjust by measures of uh, compliance to the treatment. I won't show them, I can comment them later, but the, the, the short summary is that the results are extremely similar. And, and we do uh, analyze not only the main effects of this uh, intervention, but also uh, disaggregate by parental education, uh, language spoken at home, uh, and the gender of the children. And for these heterogeneity analyses, we uh, create subsamples and compare them. And in order to take into account the correlation of uh, uh, the similarity of children of the same school, uh, we uh, cluster the standard errors at the school level. So the results, um, so first of all, uh, um, the frequency of shared book reading, again, self-reported. Okay, so uh, I start with the main effects. 
uh, we have to actually we have uh, uh, tested several different ways of of modeling and m1 stays for model one which is the specification that i have here and then we have a specification uh, without the, the the baseline measure a specification with a longer list of controls but the story is always the same so i focus only on model one and uh, as you can see, when the outcome is uh, the par parental uh, self-reports about reading uh, uh, storybooks on a daily basis to their children, uh, the main effect, uh, the estimate, the point estimate for the main effect is uh, 8%. So an increase, uh, in, these are average marginal effects, so an increase uh, in the base probability of reading on a daily basis of 8%. So just to remember, the base probability was 40%. So this would be a quite uh, a sizable effect. And uh, we have also seemingly positive effects for uh, uh, parents and children's enjoyment, smaller effects, particularly because the base probability is, uh, is uh, larger. So in relative terms, these are smaller effects. Uh, so let me focus on the frequency of shared book reading. Uh, um, if we disaggregate by level of education, what we observe uh, is that um, uh, this main effect of 8% uh, is actually twice as large among uh, parents without a tertiary degree, and it's close to zero for parents with a tertiary degree. So our interpretation of this finding uh, is that uh, and we know from the baseline that actually highly educated parents were already reading very often to their parents. The, uh, the, their uh, uh, reported frequency at the baseline was above 70%, while this activity was much less uh, uh, common among uh, less educated parents. And now we move to the, um, to the uh, uh, main outcome. So the, our measures of uh, uh, children's vocabulary. So we have the standard uh, Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test, so the version uh, B uh, the, in the French adaptation, so the, the EVIP. And as you can <laughs> see, we find a null effect, uh, no effects at all. When instead we used the, um, the measure adapted uh, to the uh, 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 books, uh, we do find an average effect size of uh, uh, 11%, uh, so a coins D, and this persists uh, at the follow-up. So our interpretation, as I said, is that uh, the standard version has very low sensitivity to at least short-term uh, uh, changes in, uh, in uh, children's vocabulary. Whatever uh, interpretation we may want to give, I think this is this contrast between AVIP B and AVIP C is a good illustration of how uh, what we can observe in terms of treatment impacts is uh, very often highly impacted by the uh, choice of measures that we have. What is for us maybe most interesting is that when looking at the results at the follow up, uh, uh, we see that uh, uh, the effects on children's uh, vocabulary are uh, small and non-significant for children of uh, tertiary educated parents, and they are uh, uh, larger uh, and quite, uh, quite substantial for children of low educated parents, almost one-fourth of the standard deviation. Um, I, I will be quick on this. We have uh, we have efforts that are concentrated on uh, male children, which is a result that we struggle to interpret, and that are concentrated on children from bilingual families. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, smaller, non-significant effects for for children uh, um, from families that speak only French. Uh, and a negative and large effect for uh, 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 children whose parents speak only in another language with their uh, uh, kids. Should be noted that this is a very small uh, uh, subsample. This is something like 30 cases. Um, I think I can I can leave these uh, uh, robustness checks for the for the discussion. Just um, three quick uh, important caveats about this, uh, this study. First of all, as I said, we have different results depending on the measure that we have. So, and, and again, uh, only the standard forms can be seen as measures of general children's vocabulary. 
Second, uh, again, a point on measurement, uh, we are quite limited uh, in the outcomes that we consider, in particular in the language uh, skills that we consider. For instance, uh, uh, we know, of course, that uh, children's active and passive vocabulary is a very strong predictor of reading and writing skills in primary education. Uh, but there are also other language skills that could be fostered by uh, um, by shared book reading and that are important for children's uh, success. Uh, phonemic and more generally phonological awareness is one of them, for instance, and we couldn't uh, uh, measure these uh, other potentially relevant uh, uh, outcomes. And the other important limitation to keep in mind is that uh, uh, we uh, uh, could observe only short-term outcomes like most previous studies. Then it's encouraging that we see that uh, uh, we don't observe at least during the first six months after the study uh, strong fade-out effects, but still we are talking about short-term uh, outcomes. So uh, conclusions. Um, um we have an rct that we argue scores reasonably well in terms of external validity uh, particularly in comparison with the, the previous studies that we have uh, made analyzed uh, we argue there is also uh, good internal validity not just because of the equivalence analysis that i showed you but also because we have uh, indications that uh, treatment replacement and treatment contamination were very uh, marginal but we can discuss it um, the intervention is a rather uh, cheap uh, intervention, uh, less than five euros per student, that is uh, uh, quite easy to, to scale. And we find indications that providing accessible information on the benefits of this activity to, to parents uh, can uh, uh, enhance the frequency of this activity with positive uh, uh, consequences for the language development of the kids. Uh, and these benefits seem to be uh, uh, stronger for uh, parents and children from uh, uh, low educated uh, uh, families. And I would uh, uh, stop here to leave more time for the discussion. Thanks a lot for uh, having listened to this presentation and for all the comments that you will give us. Sorry, thank you. Thank you very much, Carlo. Thank you. Um, so, time for questions. Maybe you can just speak out. It generally works fine. And we have a first one from Francesco, I guess. Yeah. I can. I can. I can say that I, I. I wrote it in the chat. It's actually a clarification question first to. To understand about the second year, how you adapted the treatment in the second year, it's not entirely clear from the presentation uh, whether it's different schools altogether. So half of the school were in the first year, half in the second year, or it's the, if it's the same school, how you dealt with the fact that you had treated children, but in some way you had also treated the the teachers. No, no, no. yeah, oh. I, I was very quick on this point. Uh, um, um, so when I talk about 46 schools, I mean that in the first year we had 23 schools and in the second year, different schools precisely to avoid the uh, potential issues of uh, treatment contamination. But other than this, uh, the two years were identical, meaning that the treatment was the same. We were all always uh, in, uh, in targeting the same population in the same areas uh, with the same protocol of data collection. It's really uh, a replication. In a sense, you can see. In a sense, you can see it as a uh, the second year as a replication study of the first year, and since we concluded that the replication was successful in the sense that we didn't find any significant difference between the two cohorts, uh, we, we pull the data to gain uh, in statistical uh, power. And, so the, and the second uh, adaptation, I mean, you said that eventually everyone received the treatment. Yeah. But the, but the, 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 the ones that received it in moyenne section, they continued to receive it also in con section. No, so the, no. no, no. As I said, it, it's just four months and then the, the treatment uh, stops. Uh, okay. But of course, I mean, we would recommend the schools to continue the 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 the, the, the if they had to implement this. So of course, I mean, where I'm what continue. I'm thinking of is that 
yeah, you they don't continue to differ in some way in terms of dose of treatment, and so that you can expect at the entry in primary school when you can maybe measure with more specificity, more dimensions, that you could um, have a, a follow up uh, measure. And even if you, if everyone is treated in some way, they still continue to differ in in the dosage of treatment. But that's not that doesn't seem to be the case. Or yeah. it may be the case, but it's more in timing that it's more in the timing of the treatment that they differ, but not so much in the dose. Again, the the main challenge to observe longer term outcomes was rather on the side of having the schools accepting. Uh, the, a, persist a persistent exclusion for the treatment for the uh, controlled children. And uh, I mean, it was my first experiment in France and uh, I was kind of prudent about what I was doing and uh, meeting uh, a rather uh, uh, strong position on the side of teachers. We, 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 we took this, we made this choice. Honestly, I'm, I'm not sure whether I would do it again retrospectively because I mean we really sacrificed a lot in terms of not observing the long-term outcomes uh, and maybe we could have persuaded the, the, the teachers uh, with some other strategy. Frank? Hi Carlo, thanks for the very interesting talk. Uh, so did I understand correctly that AVIPC measured more specifically the words that were included in the books? Yeah, okay. So, so what this suggests is that th this kind of interventions, I mean, shared book reading, basically, it increases the vocabulary that is, that are in the, the words that are included in the books. It's really item specific learning. And, uh, and so it may be that over the very long term, if you read many books with children, well, of course, they will acquire more vocabulary, but it remains item specific, which also helps explain why overall the effect sizes are rather low. Do, I, are you, do you agree with this? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you have an intervention that doesn't last for a long period of time, the, in, our, our take is that it's quite difficult to measure its impact with a, a measure of general vocabulary. Other than, of course, by choosing books uh, with words that are in the test of vocabulary, but this seems very uh, ad hoc. So what, what we think is relevant is to consider the two main results in connection with one another. That is to say, the evidence that uh, uh, parents of the treatment group read more and the evidence that their children learn the words of the book. So the evidence that parents of the treatment group uh, read more could be challenged, uh, arguing that this is only a social desirability bias. But the fact that we observe that their children really learn the words of the books uh, suggests that really they were reading the books and they were reading the books more often. So we have in indications that this, increase, this kind of intervention increases the frequency of shared book reading and that this increase results in learning uh, new words for the kids. Mm -hmm. So this is, I would say this is a proof of concept that this is an intervention that affects the frequency of this activity and in a way, in such a way that uh, well, kids learn uh, words in these books. Hmm? But again, as you correctly point out, uh, we cannot make strong claims in terms of the general vocabulary of children because as I, as I said, our measure of general vocabulary doesn't uh, report any effect. Mm -hmm. But which, which I think makes sense. I mean, children learn whatever they are exposed to and not what they are not exposed to. So th this is, I think, a, a case yeah. of a general observation that, that yes, you, learning, learning does not necessarily transfer to whatever you're not uh, directly exposed to. Exactly. Absolutely. I have another one for next time, but I'll let other people intervene. No, go, 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 go ahead, Frank, yes. Uh, well, of course, I'm intrigued by the, the sex effect that you find. And uh, I would say that the most obvious interpretation would be that, well, boys lag behind girls in language mm -hmm. ability. But in fact, you have the initial level already in the model. So that's not exactly what you're observing here. So exactly. in order to and yeah, I would think in order to understand this, I, I mean, it would be nice to see some graphical representation to see exactly at what level the boys start 
and where they get and similarly for for the girls Yes, so your interpretation was also our interpretation at the beginning, but then we looked uh, at the baseline uh -huh. and uh, I, I, I'm not familiar with the with the literature on the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test in uh, uh, early childhood and gender differences, but we found that uh, there was no gender difference at the baseline in the, in the vocabulary measure. So, this idea that uh, I mean there was a gap for on the side of boys and they were catching up was didn't seem to be very supported by the 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 data of the baseline. Okay, that, that's very interesting. So I think the the greatest evidence for boys lagging behind girls is more in expressive language, and of course with the VIP you have a receptive language measure. So so then perhaps the prediction would be that if you had a uh, uh, an expressive language measure at the first step and you you included it in the model maybe this would uh, partly explain this uh, this difference here yeah this is one of the regrets as i said that we didn't have uh, richer uh, measures of outcomes active vocabulary uh, familiarity with print knowledge also yeah so so it could also be um the exposure to treatment Maybe the marginal effect of, the, of, of encouraging paper parents to read affects more boys than girls because by default parents read quite easily to girls, but less so to boys. So it could be as a level of the treatment that you have this initial level heterogeneity or something like this. Yes. So we tested these two uh, by by looking. Uh, uh, well, I mean, what 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 we tried to do was to see whether the frequency of shared book reading uh, at the baseline was different. Uh, uh, between uh, girls and boys or whether the, the effects of the treatment were different for girls and boys in the frequency uh, and it was not the case. Okay. Um, we also, um, we, I should say, we, we, uh, we asked uh, the, 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 the item on um, shared book reading frequency was about parents in a generic way. We didn't ask separately for fathers and mothers. Mm -hmm. So we don't know whether uh, the increases were different for fathers and mothers and whether this could have played for the gendered impacts. Um, that's another potential interpretation, mm -hmm. but we, we cannot really test it with, the, with our data. Okay. I, I had a question of, on, on effect sizes, because you're showing ITTs. Yeah. Okay, but but uh, of course it all depends on what you call the treatment, the actual treatment, right? You have some kind of measure of the treatment with uh, maybe you can go back to that slide with the, the uh, so what is it the the, the, the if if parents uh, read every day, right? The is that your yeah, measure? The, 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 or, the, exactly the um, the shared book reading uh, but, frequency, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's it's yes or no for for once a day. No, no. Uh, we 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 have uh, we have um, um, it's a Likert scale. We have four uh, categories. Um, you can say um, oh. never. Uh, so every day, a few times a week, uh, uh, from time to time, uh, and never. And what we have done was to uh, test uh, treatment impacts at different thresholds. So contrasting every day versus the, all the other variables, every day or sometimes versus the other versus the other variables, etc. And and the results are very similar. Actually, this is the specification with the smallest uh, uh, effect size. Mm -hmm. So, but the the simple summary is that uh, whatever. Uh, way you use to dichotomize these uh, four category variables you find similar uh, uh, effects right so be because if you if you were to rescale your ITT by by this this effect this first stage the effect is enormous because you rescale by by more than, than 10 times yeah yeah so it means so if you so if the treatment is moving from the the lower part of the scale to the upper part of the scale, which is which is maybe a huge treatment, in fact. But if this is the, the treatment we scale the effect to, 
then you have, uh, I don't know, uh, 100% of the standard deviation, something like this. Yeah, so uh, I agree with with all your points. Uh, the 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 point is that we didn't we didn't consider uh, the self reported uh, measure uh -huh. of shared book reading by the parents uh, as uh, a, a, as a measure of treatment compliance. And actually, what we used in our analysis of treatment compliance was uh, much more modestly and restrictively, I would say, the, um, the fact that parents, uh, that we could contact parents in the phone call. So remember? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember we had a, um, yeah. a phone yeah, call yeah. Uh -huh. where we presented the project and the main messages. It was a short phone call, right? So it was a summary of the messages. And, uh, uh, but we thought this was a quite important component because we were sure that uh, everyone was getting the messages, okay? But actually we had uh, some 10% of the parents that did not, uh, that we could not reach. They didn't reply or... And so we used this measure as a measure of treatment compliance in the sense of, compliant in the sense of having access to the contents of the information contents, not in the sense of reading the books, mm -hmm. which is another interpretation, which is your understanding of compliance. And when we uh, uh, estimated the, 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 the efforts on the treated on using uh, this, our measure of compliance, so whether we could reach parents to provide information or not, uh, um, the results were very similar, but you see why it's because the compliance yeah. on this yeah. indicator was very high, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and so do, did, did you measure, because you insisted a lot on the dialog dialogic aspect of the intervention at the beginning. So did you have any way to measure if this dialogic dimension was indeed implemented by the parents? Because it seemed to be like the key to the whole thing. Uh, no, we didn't have any measure because we were already a bit skeptical about uh, the parental uh -huh. self reports uh -huh. of uh -huh. the frequency. And, and by the way, it was a self-administered uh, questionnaire uh, delivered uh, uh, by, uh, by the teachers to the parents. Uh, so then it was confidential because the, 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 the teachers couldn't see the answers, but uh, yeah. we didn't want to have a long questionnaire. So we had just a few... Uh, social demo variables and the few variables that uh, I uh, uh, showed you. Uh, we thought that if there were more interactions around the books, uh, we could have seen some indications that the activity was more enjoyable and that we would see uh, also uh, impacts on uh, children's and parents' enjoyment, but this is a rather indirect uh, way of uh, measuring what you are referring to. So we were really limited to the frequency of the activity and the enjoyment of this activity. We were focusing on the enjoyment because we thought also that if parents and children like the activity, there are more chances that they will continue this activity also when the project ends. And uh, that's why we, I mean, we decided to measure this aspect of, uh, of the, 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 the the shared book reading practices. Um, yeah, but that's a good point. This was another mm -hmm. relevant intermediate outcome. Mm -hmm. So we have two or three minutes. Are there any more questions? Francesco, ah. I thought you had, yeah, Francesco is. Yeah, I, I could ask what I just wrote in the chat, I mean, did you did you check the actual content of the books? Could it be that they were of greater interest to boys than to girls on average? Uh, no, that's a very interesting point because in the literature, uh, there is almost no discussion of the role that books for kids play in these uh, shared book reading interventions. And when selecting the books uh, for the project, uh, we actually realized that the type of books that select can can be very relevant in terms of treatment impacts. For instance, because books differ a lot in the quantity of images that they have, uh, in the richness of the text that can be very challenging for some parents, the level of difficulty of the vocabulary that they have. So th there's plenty of parameters that matters for the, for the uh, impact of the intervention. 
one of so we had a quite detailed list of criteria to select the books uh, and one of the criteria was that we wanted to have uh, books that were pretty uh, neutral in terms of their uh, gender contents so for instance we didn't have uh, uh, stories focusing uh, uh, exclusively around uh, playing football or uh, activities that are very uh, gender uh, uh, tight Okay, I, I, I think it's it's time we should uh, we chose, uh, we, we should uh, close it uh, now. So, uh, merci beaucoup, uh, Carlo, pour cette présentation uh, très intéressante. Merci à votre participation et uh, pour, pour vos questions. Uh, on recommence dans exactement quatre semaines, même heure, même lieu, et uh, je présenterai un papier sur uh, uh, l'éducation uh, civique. Euh, dans trois, une expérimentation sur l'éducation civique dans trois pays européens. Merci voilà. Merci d'être venu. À bientôt. Merci à tous et à toutes pour les commentaires. Merci, Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir.